Hey folks, welcome to this uh, opening of the campaign scenario from Stalingrad 42. This is of course a, a Mark Simonich design published by GMT Games in 2019. Uh, just going to do a quick audio check, make sure that's working. Okay. Okay. So hi everyone, welcome to Stalingrad 42. This is the uh, the campaign scenario. Uh, it's it's hard to kind of capture this all on camera. If I put the camera sort of far away, it's hard to see all the unit details. Um, <laughs> what you see here is pretty much the uh, the main area of operations for the first well variable turn. Um, certainly, initially, the Germans will be pushing towards the Don River up here. In the south, they'll be pushing towards Rostov and everywhere in between as well. Um, but I can always move the camera around later on as, as the front moves <laughs> and I may have to move it back. Uh, apologies if you can't quite see these units way up in the top here. There is actually a lot of activity going on up here. This is where the main 4th uh, Panzer Army is driving through. Uh, but you'll see a lot of 6th Army here and action down the south with the um, yeah 1st Panzer Army and, and others going on as well. So look, this is, um, yeah, I, I did the intro video, it's a uh, Hex Encounter. Uh, Zock Bonds. Uh, I've been playing through the, the Vassal module. I did one playthrough, aborted that, restarted, and the second attempt is going pretty well. The biggest issue that I'm having is just kind of forgetting little exceptions here and there. Uh, so the reason I aborted the first playthrough was that I was forgetting about the determined defense stands in these print on map printed fortified areas. This red band here is a fortified zone, which enables the Russians defending there to make uh, a determined defense. To give you a sense of how this plays through, um, let's get started. I have pretty much started the uh, initial German, so that's turn one, the Germans go first, they have their initial phase, they place uh, replacements, so you can see I've done that down here. Uh, they get one armoured, one infantry, which is interesting, just to set up, they get that. They get two resource points, and I'm playing with the optional um, rule for prepared offensives. And I was doing that in my sort of earlier um, vassal playthrough. It seemed a, a nice little rule, so I'm playing that as well. The other alternative to spend these points is supply trucks, which will uh, fuel my artillery, which is also really nice. But these prepared offensives basically let you roll twice on the attack. Once they're ready, they take one turn to prepare. Next turn, the Germans will be able to roll two dice on one attack and pick um, uh, the, the result they want. Um, and that's about it. So we can proceed to the German movement phase. And on this first turn, the Germans can pretty much only do tactical movement. Um, this is another game where I found Vassal <laughs> really handy for managing a lot of information. Um, I'm becoming a Vassal convert. I have rarely played Vassal. I, I don't like playing Vassal because you know, one of the reasons I like these big board, board games is you, you can come to the map and it keeps kind of your eyes arrest from the screen. I'm on the screen all day and um, yeah, it's good to get away from it. So, um, yeah, tactical movement. And let me talk about what I'm trying to do here. So, 4th Pan's army up here, breaking through, driving towards Voronezh. Um, It'd be lovely to capture it, but basically the, the Germans want to anchor their left flank on the Don River and then drive south towards the Caucasus. So you can see what's going to happen is 4th Panzer Army will drive down here and drive their force, well, as they did historically, after a brief delay up here, drive down here, linking up with other Russian, uh, other German forces pushing through. Uh, in particular, the first Panzer Army driving through here. It's kind of through this corridor. There's a bridge 
um, across the Donets uh, at uh, Lysychansk. So they want to cross over here, link up, and then continue driving south. Um, in my Vassal playthrough, 17th Army down south here, around Rostov, really struggled. They've advanced a couple of hexes on the outskirts of Rostov, but they've just, yeah, really struggled. They don't have the numbers down here. Um, so, yeah, let's see if I can learn from those mistakes. These blue marks are railheads, and... Germans want to advance those as far forward as possible. They get two, they can advance four, I think four railheads per turn, each railhead two hexes forward, provided it's clear of uh, enemy zones of control. So this is the most important breakthrough up here, and this is where uh, the Germans want to spend their resources. When I say resources, I mean their artillery and their air units. They get two German air units, one Romanian air unit per turn, for column shifts, they get their really cool elite armor up here as well. Um, and I got really lucky up here in my earlier playthrough. Uh, the Germans got uh, some shattered defender results, which was really amazing. Um, we just let them break through really nicely and really quickly. Let's see if I can sort of repeat that. And I'm trying to think of how I got it done. <laughs> what did I do? Well, for a start, the other thing that Vassal does is it lets you know when units have moved. You get that little move marker. I'm going to have to sort of somehow keep that in mind. So as I move, I might try to just tilt these guys a little bit. Um, I can do tack move. It'd be nice to get some armor into this attack down here. So these guys have a defense of eight, no armor. They have a defense of seven, no armor. And eight, nine, ten, defense of ten, no armor. So if I can just kind of split my armor up a little bit, so bring this elite 24th Panzer Division down south. Um, and so they'll attack to the south here, give me hopefully a nice breakthrough along here. Uh, these are Hungarian um, divisions. Uh, looking at here, 1621 on eight. I'll bring them up as well. That'll give me 26 on 8 for 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 5 to 1, back because of the defensive terrain to 4 to 1. I can optionally bring some artillery there as well. And, yeah, again, I apologise. It's just another camera. This is really, really up uh, in the north. Um, I'll try and explain more of what I'm doing so you, because it's really hard to read. But basically I'm bringing, splitting my armour up so they're not all in the one attack because I, there are some elite armour units. I'll, show, I'll bring these up close to the camera. So here's, here's one example. Um, they have that little red dot next to their combat factor on the left. So basically attack, the, the first number is their attack, second number is their defence, and the third number is their movement and the little red dot next to the 10 indicates this is an elite armor unit which gives the germans in effect two column shifts um, in their favor and there aren't many of these units so i really want to use them there's no point sort of having them all in the one combat at least as far as i grasp so it's good to split them up and get those two column shifts into multiple different combats basically which is what i'm doing here so there'll be a column shift here two column shifts here and two column shifts down in the south here i'm not as concerned about this northern hex um if i can target these three hexes along the line i and get some good combats going i'd be pretty happy along the f middle here uh, these guys the 6th Army will pretty much just hold. 
there's a thin line here, you've got Zoc bonds between them. Uh, I might just shift these guys' tactical movement a bit to the right. Uh, I'll inspect these stacks. We've got 10 defense there, but this is where the defensive perimeter ends for the Russians. So there's this gap in the center here where the 6th Army is, where the Russians don't have um, defenses and thus they can't make their determined defenses in, whoops, in this area around here. And this is to the 6th Army's advantage. How can they exploit this though? There's a lot of Russian armor and anti-tank here, which basically cancels their column shifts. I've got my elite armor back here. Um, and we need to start thinking about where to break through. Where do we want to hit their line? This is a little bit more densely packed around here. And again, my previous sort of play test uh, that was, wasn't recorded. Uh, it was a slower grind forward for the Germans. So I've got 10, I think it's 10 there as well. And it's probably 10 here. Yep, 10, 10, 10. And 11. With some armor in reserve and some more armor in reserve. Okay. So, if I can look to bring, maybe 20 factors into combat here with, actually that'll be 30 factors, uh, which will give me, I think four to one with the column shift. And then something similar here, what have I got here? 24, maybe I'll bring it here and I'll try and punch the hole through the center right here. So I'll put them there instead. Just two combats basically I'm looking at for the sixth army. Um, and bring these guys up into there. No, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to uh, I have to get two to one. That'd make it three to one on there. Hmm, it's tough, 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 tough. There, up attack there. <laughs> let me re sorry, let me rethink this. These opening moves are critical. If, uh, I would like to get, oops. If possible, I wanna get three different attacks along this line here. This northernmost attack is gonna be relatively weak. Okay, so I can bring Free stacking unit here, they can't reach anywhere. That's 11. So I can get 22 maybe, that'd be good. Yeah, so I'll go, oh, they can't reach either. I think I'm just gonna have to get the two combats going in the center. So one, ten, yeah, get two strong combats in the center here and ignore the units on the left and right, perhaps, or perhaps I There's a defense of eight there. I could bring I could bring these guys down and these guys in and get an attack there with some Romanian help. These are the Romanian troops here. 
Um, these guys can't do much. They'll just sort of shift further to the front. Gain tack move on the first turn. Uh, I will move this just a little bit closer. And I'll do the same with this headquarters up the top here. They'll move one, two. They can move two hexes on their deployed side. If they move any further than that, uh, they become disrupted and can't then shoot, which doesn't really matter anyway. I will also point out, okay, so I'm only a couple of minutes to this, but I'm still very inexperienced with this. So it's very, very, very likely that I'll make mistakes. The main thing I probably do wrong is just forget little exceptions. I'll probably forget determined defense um, in playing through those early two scenarios. I was uh, just kind of forgetting the details for disruption and full retreat. Basically, units that retreat become disrupted. Units that retreat a lot become placed under full retreat with varying conditions. Then there's sort of supply and isolation penalties as well, which isn't that bad. Being out of supply, the penalties are pretty minor. Um, apart from suffering potential isolation attrition, they're not so bad. All right, so it's the Romanians attacking there um, with German help. And we've got uh, 17, 22 on eight. If I can get these guys in as well, tack move into there. That'll give me 24, three to one. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice to get across the nets here somewhere. I've kind of uh, taken my replacement, so this is going to be a slow, another slow grind. We'll push in there. I wonder if it's worth it. They're going to be doubled if I attack across that minor river. Um, attack move up a little bit. I believe minor rivers double the defenders they do unless I can get across somehow I may just wait for these other northern attacks to come around and just hold there so I'll move my mountain infantry down a little bit um, and this is kind of where I want to in, again in the last scenario this is where the Germans managed to get a crossing here so how can I repeat that well, they've got a defense here of 10 in fortified areas. Defense there of 12. Jeez. Okay, if I can throw the kitchen sink at this attack, we'll see what happens. One, two come across, tack move, tack move, we'll tack move in there, these guys will just tack move a little bit closer, put that rail link under the, uh, the Italians. So these are the Italians, they've got a stack of uh, four units here, and um, this is where it gets a bit tougher for the Germans, they just don't have the strength to push hard and break through. They don't have their kind of many of their elite armoured divisions. They can move one hex. Uh, these guys can also move one hex. Um, I might just shift them down to the right because I kind of want to focus through this area here is where I'm going to focus the first Panzer army. And they're going to try and cross here, and it's an important crossing. You can see here, there's a bridge here, bridge here. Uh, there's a little bridge there. That's a hard one to get to. Um, okay, so down further south. Uh, defense of seven, defense of seven. Uh, there's no river here, so these guys aren't penalised. We will just tack move that division. Oh no, I won't. Uh, yes, I will. 
we'll move them down there just in preparation for helping with this southern drive. I want to, want to kind of move these forces around the southern edge, um, right on the edge of the Sea of Azov here. And these Romanians here, I think they are. We'll just tack them up a little bit. I'll move that HQ up a little bit. Headquarters here, basically what they do is provide um, artillery, which provides column shifts in combat. Okay, so that's pretty much German movement done. Now let's get to combat. Um, and look, I think I think this is probably the most important Actually, I don't know what the most important one is. Um, that is three combats up the toppy. One, two, three. Let's see what we can do here first. Defense of eight, one column shift to the left, and I'm throwing in 10, 26. So three to one. They've got one to the left because of their defensive line, so two to one. But I have my elite armor, so three to one, four to one. Um, it's, a good, it's a good column, pretty much guarantees a retreat. Um, and a good roll will, um... Ooh, it's so tempting just to start up one more. I could throw in some airplanes. Let's throw in some aircraft. All right, so we'll bring in these guys for a five to one. Another column shift, five to one. The result of a, is a three, so it's an A1, D1 result. Both sides lose one step. Now the Germans can't take it from their minor allies. Um, they have to take it themselves. The Russians will just take a step loss. Now, A1, D1 also means that they must retreat two hexes or make a determined defense stand. They're in these fortifications, so they can do so. Um, it's an orange result on the CRT. I'll show you that. So look, we had five to one, three, A1, D1, this result here. Orange result means it's a negative one dice roll modifier. They don't have any other modifiers that apply. They could use their, I don't think they can use defensive support. They're not anyway, so it's a negative one dice roll modifier to a five, which is a four, which is a partial success, which means they have to retreat one or two hexes that was moved back one. It also limits the uh, German advance to one. And if I understand the advance after combat rules, it doesn't necessarily have to be that the the advances don't have to be in the uh, into the defender's hex first. So those Hungarians here can sort of advance to the right or to the south, rather. Yep, that's right. All right, so not the best combat, but we've got these uh, these Russians off their defensive lines. I'll do the top combat next. And looking here at six, 19, 29, 39, 40, which is the maximum uh, factors I can bring to combat. 40 on 10. So 4 to 1, 3 to 1 for fortification, 4 to 1, 5 to 1 for my elite armor. 5 to 1, and I've got second army. Uh, I think I'm happy with five to one. Let's see what we get. Five to one. Five to one, six is a defender shattered result. All right, this is what we want to see for our opening combats. What this does is, it, excuse me, does that reach over? It places a
full retreat marker. On that stack, they have to retreat four hexes. One, two, three, four, let's say. Um, and this gives the attackers a potential breakthrough. So what I can do here is move... I don't have a lot of <laughs> mech units here. Can form a breakthrough stack. This is where uh, a little bit hazy in the rules. Form a breakthrough um, stack uh, in the defender's hex. That's one. Now they've got three. Well, actually, I think they're limited because there's two foot units, and they're they're limited to two hexes. Yeah, declare the stack, conduct the advance after combat, the breakthrough group, resolve any breakthrough combats. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do a great deal just because of the, the, the lack of armour. Um, what I could do is one of those units that was up the top, the second army, they could just advance into there. And... These guys technically shouldn't advance until after the breakthrough group, but they're not going to be doing too much. So this is my breakthrough group, basically. One, two, three units. And they can go four hexes, or they basically have four points to spend on this breakthrough. So one, one to go here. Now where else do they want to go? Um, you can attack there, you can attack there. Swing around to the south, so they can go one, two, three, and then spend a point to attack here. And they've got an attack of 18 on 5. Now their air, because I spent, I didn't spend air on that. What did I spend air on? That was this one down here, wasn't it? It's been used. Um, so 18 on 5 is 3 to 1. I have an elite. So the three to one goes up to four to one. The reason it's only four to one is because they have armor, so it cancels one of my armor shifts, but not the elite, if I'm understanding that correctly. So it's four to one. Four to one six is a D one. Uh, I guess they'll lose the infantry. Uh, D1 means they have to retreat three hexes, one, two, three, and they're also marked with a disrupted. Well, they can't make a determined defense because it's a clear terrain, as opposed to the previous combat, which took place. Uh, and incidentally, a DS result, uh, you can't make a determined defense under that. Now, I can advance after combat and... Just actually, I'll just do that. So I won't advance with everything, but yeah, create some problems and it'll force the Russians here to retreat. So I've gone one, two, three, four, and I'm done. That's the four hexes of my advance. This now creates difficulties for these guys and my next attack. So here I have got 20. Uh, 33 on 8, which is 4 to 1, 3 to 1 for the, the uh, fortifications, up to 5 to 1 for my elite armour. 5 to 1, 5 is a DR4 result, so they have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and they are also in full retreat. Uh, DR4 result, again no determined defense is possible. Again I can form a breakthrough group and I 
again. I'll just kind of do one, two. Technically, again, that should happen after my breakthrough group, but I, I just worry about forgetting it. So, four hexes. Um, one, two, three. Now, I don't have to... Basically, only the breakthrough group can participate in combat, but I don't know if there's really any places where I can... I could attack here or just keep driving. For example, I could do this. One, two... Sorry, one, two, three, four. Now, when you move adjacent to units in full retreat, they have to retreat two spaces. I could go one, two, three, four, and one, two, one, two, three, four, and force these guys to retreat two spaces. Um, which, again, opens this kind of gap here in the center. Now, a lot of options there. I could have attacked to the north, attacked that hex with seven, it would have given me uh, 23 on 7, 3 to 1, moved up to 4 to 1. I could have attacked in the south here. Um, but these guys are going to be trapped anyway, because they're going to have to stop whenever they move here. Um, and I've kept those full retreat units further away. And I've saved my headquarter artillery, haven't used any of that yet. I'm pretty conservative with my artillery ammo because um, you don't get a lot of this back. Basically two supply points per turn. And yes, you do start off with one on the map. I'm aware of that. So they get a free replenishment. But I, yeah, the more, longer I can save that, the better. All right, so that's combat up in the north with the main 4th Panzer Army drive. Pretty, pretty good, I think. Again, one, two, three. A lot of options I could have done. I could have attacked again. Maybe I should have, I don't know. What this does is it traps these two infantry divisions down here. And um, yeah, they'll be locked in. So shifting to the south now, we're looking at the 6th six, sixth Army. And... I was tossing up attacks in these two areas. Now that I look at it, I just wonder if I should just attack this hex for an easier combat. It's basically, if I attack here, I'm looking at 21 on 10, 2 to 1, 3 to 1. If I attack here, I'll have 4 to 1. And that one extra column shift is going to be pretty important. I might attack here first, see what happens. So, the Russians have got 12 in this hex, and I have got 18, 25, 31, yeah, 37. So I've got three to one, plus one, four to one. Um, I still have an aircraft, four to one. And if I break through here, I'm just looking at what units are involved. The problem here is if I break through, I don't have a great breakthrough group to form two units basically. Uh, so let's just try four to one and see what we get. Four to one, one, which is a, still, a, <laughs> it's still a DR2 result and no determined defense is possible. So one, two, they become uh, disrupted. I can advance one. And then two. These guys will hang, hang right there. 
So whenever I'm advancing, I'm mindful of lock bonds, and it's it's actually it's an interesting game. It's um it's better to leave a gap and leave a zoc bond. Hopefully you can see that easily on the camera. It's um it's it's better to leave this gap here instead of putting a, a weak unit there. Now this is not necessarily a weak unit, but it's a vulnerability. Basically there's no if there's no unit there, the, the Russians can't attack. Not that they're going to, but um yeah, you want to maintain strong defensive positions rather than a weaker, more balanced line. Just an interesting um, sort of aspect of the rules. Okay, so uh, yeah, I might uh, for a 10, 22 on 10 plus one is three to one. Um, three to one. Let's roll the dice and see what happens. Three to one. Three to one. Three is a dr two result. There you go. One two. They are disrupted, and we can advance. And I could advance again. Um, ooh, do I move one more hex, maybe to there or there? I'm just thinking if I advance one more to here, it locks in this whole stack. Uh, good defense of eight. Is it possible that, oh yeah, the Russians aren't going to counterattack there, are they? So I'll do that. Just kind of slows down their retreat from this, this position here. I could get a low odds attack there. It'd basically be, uh, geez, terrible. So I won't do that. All right, shifting further south, looking at the Romanians down here. I don't think I was going to attack across here because this is a, across a minor river, which will double their um, defense. And yeah, that'll double it to 16. And I've got 12, 18, 23, would be one to one, no armor. So nothing happening along here. Uh, I'd like to get some attacks on here. I just don't know if I can get the odds. 12, 12, 12, 12, defense of 12, and I've got 12, 19, 24. I've got two to one, but no armor. And they, oops, I do have armor, sorry. Two to one. Armor cancels out. One to one because of their fortif fortification. Uh, one to one. It's a generous CRT, but hmm. I don't know if it's that generous. It'd be a gamble. Uh, or I could bring in my aircraft. My last remaining aircraft to help with the attack. To shift up to two to one. Uh, let's do it. All right. So two to one. Two to one five is an A one D one result. So A one, which the Germans are happy with. I guess it's a step loss, but the A1D1 result um, gives them two advances and it forces... Ah, they can make a determined defence, which they will do. Now we need to designate a lead unit. They're in fortified 
positions. So we're looking at, this is the determined defense table. So you're looking at fortification here. Um, A1, D1 is not cream. There's no elite unit. I won't use my, do I even have defensive support? Yeah, I do. But I won't use it. So we'll just roll and see what happens. Um, six, it's a good, result, good roll. It's a um, success. They uh, force a step loss of their choosing on any of the attackers. And they take one additional hit themselves from their lead unit. And they stop that German advance. All right, shifting around, uh, I think we'll try and get the Romanians through here. Defense of 10, I've got 11, uh, 17, 21, 21 on 10, so two to one. Sh shifted left because of the fortifications, shifted right because of the Romanian armor. He's back up to two to one with a Romanian aircraft. Three to one. Three to one, three is a DR2 result. We'll make another determined defense here in a fortified position. And another six. Okay, so they will force a step on that Romanian armor. That is now used, it disappears. They suffer a step, and that's it. Wait, three to one. What was I doing? Oh, it's getting late. I'm losing track of what's happening. Um, what did I roll for? Is it DR2? Another advantage of Vassal is you can go back through your logs and see what you rolled for combat. Um, I can't exactly recall. I think it was a 3 to 1, 3 DR2 result. Uh, okay, so nothing happened there. Shifting further south, not a lot happening. I'm just going to try and get a little combat way down here. Uh, defense of 7 in a fortified position. And I have got, you can't quite see this, this is 13, 20, 24. 24 on 7 is 3 to 1. Elite armor shifts up to 5 to 1. Fortification back down to 4 to 1. So I've used my aircraft, so 4 to 1. 4 to 1, 5 is a DR4 result, and they cannot make a determined defense. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll pull back to the one, two, three, four. Yep, they'll pull back to the Rostov defences. And I could form a breakout group here, but it won't be very strong. But it might get a decent, it might be able to get an attack off. Um, okay, so I've got 10, 18 here. I go one. Yeah, I could get an attack on this hex now. So it's two to one, three to one, four to one for my armor. Yeah, four to one, oh, three to one for the fortification. Three to one, one is an exchange result. Uh, each side loses one step determined by the opposing player. That was a bad, bad result. And this is unfortunate because now these guys have to be replaced by a remnant. Ouch, should've just, uh, should've done something else. Um, yeah, that'll do. I could have advanced one more hex here or there. It does, it's, yeah, as I said. So that is the end of, uh, 
German movement, they make a recovery. If there's any German um, disrupted or units, the disrupted markers are removed. If there are any full retreats, they're removed, unless they're adjacent to enemy units, in which case they make a, a roll, a recovery rally roll for it. Um, we then move to the supply phase. We move the rail hits. So basically, we can move four of these rail hits up to two hexes each. So one, two, that's clear of zones of control. We have one here which can't move at all. We had, we have one here which could move one hex forward. Let's do that. That's two. This one can move up to there. That's three. I think, uh, and one there which can't move at all. So not great. Uh, again, you want to kind of support the advancement of these railheads by kind of attacking to clear these spaces, for example. So if I, if I would have moved into here, which I probably should have done, but yeah, too late now, uh, and check supply. Everyone's sort of in supply at this stage. Yep, they are, they're okay. So no problems there. There's no isolation attrition. Um, and we can flip headquarters with SPs. So there's an SP up here, but the headquarters did not fire their artillery, so that's it. And that is the end of the first German player turn. So I'll wrap it up here, as I said, because I'm, I'm going to just double check what I've done. Um, and as I said, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure that I'm not making sort of rules errors. So I want to double check all this. But um, yeah, that's basically how how the first turn plays out. Uh, I think the Germans... Oh, sorry, RDJ. Oh, I, it's hard to see the, ca the, the chat because I'm playing on the other side of the camera. Yeah, yeah I did get the, um, the your email about Marvel United and I replied, sorry, I'm not sure you got my reply. So um, yeah, again, I'll uh, I'll be playing through this. It's I, I think this will be the full campaign. So the, the the introductory scenario for Blau, Case Blue, and the campaign game use the exact same setup. The introductory scenario just runs for eight turns, and the Germans need to capture eight VPs. The full campaign runs for thirty six turns, and the Germans have to capture a heap of VPs. So yeah. This will be the start of, of something bigger. Basically, what's going to happen now is uh, German, uh, sorry, Russian, Russian turn, Russian initial phase. They get some reinforcements immediately, which can come on. Um, I won't do that right now. Like I said, I'm just going to sit and reread the rules and double check everything. But uh, yeah, I'll be back later to play through this. Take care, everyone.